The Lord be with you. Good morning. My name is Sarah Newton. To those online and all gathered in this space, welcome to worship with Grace Presbyterian. In-house guests are encouraged to take a guest card from the pew pocket, complete, and drop it in the offering plate later in the service. If you're online, please type a greeting and or share prayers. If things seem a little out of place or you saw muddy footprints around the church, that's because yesterday's Advent gathering was moved to our church. Our thanks to the congregational care team for making delicious pots of soup and baked potatoes. They even found a way to make s'mores without a campfire. Thank you to our Christian formation team for all the activities and games and crafts and costume silliness. Next Sunday, immediately following worship, there's a congregational meeting to receive the new slate of elders from our nominating committee. More information will be presented this coming week. But this is today, and today is a very important day for our congregation. After multiple years of praying, planning, and organizing, it's time to break ground for Tables of Grace. Yay! <laughs> Join us outside next to the main parking lot for a brief service of consecration and look for a non-rocky place to dig your shovel into the ground. <laughs> the groundbreaking service um, will be visible by video um, for those of, that are on Facebook today. Um, one of the most common heard themes throughout the Gospels is fear not and do not be afraid, which is a bit of a paradox when it's usually said when someone is facing a strange or difficult situation such as learning you are to become the teenage mother of the Son of God. What does it mean to trust God in such times? We know that Jesus himself faced many perilous and dangerous times. Can you imagine Mary whispering, do not be, do not be afraid? For Mary, for Jesus, for each of us, God meets us in our fear. Let us trust and worship God. Please join me in the call to worship. In this season of prophecy, promise, and preparation, we come to be renewed and refreshed. We come to be inspired by the stories of a Messiah who will change the world and change us. We come to listen for words of hope and joy, promise and challenge. We come with open ears, open minds, and open hearts. We come to receive the blessings God has in store for us in this season of waiting. Come, let us worship our God, the one who brings all things to fulfillment. Over a hundred people from the ages of two to 80 years old were asked the question, what are you afraid of? From the voices of different generations, hear their answers. Not being enough. Not making enough of a difference. Being embarrassed. That we will forget we belong to one another. Climate change. Children having to learn gun violence drills at school. Spiders. Not having someone to take care of me. Not having someone who knows my stories. Ending up alone. Nightmares. Stopping short of following God all the way. Today, we light the candle of peace because we so desperately need God's peace in the midst of all we fear. May this light be a reminder that Christ is coming. God was with us generations before, God is with us today, and God will be with us tomorrow. Even now, God is on his way. Amen.
be seated. Fear can be a good thing. It can help us be attentive while driving down the highway. It can alert us to possible accidents. It can motivate us to do our best. However, fear can also be harmful. For so many of us, fear of the other, fear of failure, or fear of the unknown has led us to make sinful choices in our lives. Choices such as building walls or tearing others down. Today, in confession, we ask for mercy and pray for guidance. As we confess, we come before an entirely merciful and loving God who says to us, do not be afraid. Let us pray. Patient God, you know just how often we make decisions from a place of fear rather than love. You know just how often we allow fear to take the place of logic, fanning unhealthy fires in our lives. You know just how often we tuck your words, do not be afraid, on dusty shelves and in the back of closets, stubbornly holding on to our own point of view. Forgive us for giving fear the microphone. Silence the voices of scarcity, shame, and rejection, which spark and feed so much of our fear to recenter us in love. With hope we pray. Amen. Family of faith, even when we forget God's words, God does not forget us. Even when we lose our way, God does not lose us. Even when we fall short or make mistakes, God forgives and holds on to us. We are known, forgiven, and loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. We have been reconciled to God, so let us be reconciled with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Please share signs of Christ's peace. a story about Mary. You remember Mary, who was the mother of Jesus, right? Well, no, nobody knows what she looks like. Here's what one person thinks. Mary looks like that. Nobody knows what angels look like. And she got to talk to an angel. So here's what one person thinks that might have looked like. There's Mary, and there's an angel, right? A different one. There's so many ways to imagine this. Let's see. Well, that's that one. Uh, I'm going to save that one because it's my favorite. Look at this one. It says to Mary, don't be afraid. So we think angels must have been pretty amazing to look at since they always have to say, don't be afraid of me. I don't think this looks too scary, does it? The angel is whispering into Mary's ear. So it looks more like, you know, somebody who'd be a friend, somebody who would be kind to you, whispering into her ear. And this artist also imagined the angel whispering into Mary's ear. Probably can't see it, but she's whispering, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Angel, what does that angel's robe look like? 
Yeah, it, it has flowers on it. Flowers. And birds. Flowers, birds. Uh-huh. And, and I think there's even, a, there's, it's hard to see, but there's a bunny rabbit, there's birds and flowers. It's like that angel's robe is covered in all these images of creation. And I, I love that, does, do you, so do you think Mary, does she look afraid in these pictures? She doesn't really look afraid. I think she, she looks like she feels at peace, I think, that this angel is bringing good news and that she can trust the angel, yeah. Yeah, it's like, so, so, yeah, there's so many different ways to imagine angels. We just don't know. But this is, I just wanted to share with you a few ideas of what maybe some artists thought about these angels. And I love these because they look like someone who is bringing good, good news. And I like to imagine angels that way. Because Mary did get good news. She got the good news that she would get to be the mother of baby Jesus. And that was exciting and scary and wonderful all at the same time. And that's what we're getting ready for, too. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for Mary. And we thank you that she was so brave and that she could trust that that good news that the angel brought was good news that came from you. And your good news to us is your love for us that is always there. We thank you for that. Amen. To a people under the threat of invasion and destruction, the prophet foretells a peaceful kingdom under the rule of an offshoot of Jesse's family tree. In other words, a descendant of David. As Christians, we understand Jesus to be that offshoot and his reign to be that of a peaceful kingdom. A reading from Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 through 10. A shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse. A branch will sprout from his roots. The Lord's spirit will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of planning and strength, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He will delight in fearing the Lord. He won't judge by appearances nor decide by hearsay. He will judge the needy with righteousness and decide with equity for those who suffer in the land. He will strike the violent with the rod of his mouth. By the breath of his lips, he will kill the wicked. Righteousness will be the belt around his hips and faithfulness the belt around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion will feed together and a little child will lead them. The crow and the bear will graze, their young will lie down together, and a lion will eat straw like an ox. A nursing child will play over the snake's hole, and toddlers will reach right over the serpent's den. They won't harm or destroy anywhere on my holy mountain. The earth will surely be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, just as the water covers the sea. The word of God for the people of God. And now we turn to Luke, the first chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. We hear this Annunciation story is only told here. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, 
to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen, since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What do we pass on from generation to generation? Our, our DNA, our good or poor eyesight, our curly or straight hair, including cowlicks. As I pack and prepare for a move, I've also been thinking about the things that accumulate. After moving multiple sets of my grandmother's china, it is time to let them go. No other family members want them anymore. Antique dealers tell me they won't sell. I keep hoping maybe there's an artist out there somewhere who could find a wonderful way to reuse them. There are things I can choose not to burden my kids with, but there are other things that can't be avoided. We know depression or anxiety can run through generations, predispositions to addiction. There is much we wish we didn't pass on, generation to generation. Tangibles, intangibles, but also beliefs, attitudes, moral values. There are so many things we hope to pass on to our children, our students, our communities. Not long after I shared that I would be relocating to western Michigan, a friend sent me a link to an episode of a Netflix series, Unsolved Mysteries. I was like, oh, okay. Now, while the series, it looks like it focuses heavily on unsolved crimes, the particular episode they sent me a link to featured an event that took place on March 8th of 1994 in and around the town of Holland, my future home. Approximately 300 witnesses saw unexplainable lights in the sky along Lake Michigan over a stretch of hundreds of miles. It's by far one of the most highly witnessed UFO events in U.S. history. And these are the stories that search committees do not tell you when you come for a visit. Look at our beautiful lake. We have a tulip festival. Our downtown sidewalks are heated in the winter. No one tells you about aliens. Wow. And of course, I had to watch the episode, and it was... Wow, yeah, I'm still thinking about it. But my favorite part was some of the witness interviews. One woman spoke with such joy as she described the mysterious lights in the sky. She was so intrigued that she got her young children out of bed to come outside and see the lights. And she spoke of how thankful she was that she had gotten to experience This once-in-a-lifetime, who knows, encounter. Now, she didn't strike me as a UFO fanatic. She didn't seem like someone who's out chasing after Bigfoot or Mothman. 
she seemed like your average working mom, an average person with an openness to mystery and possibility and the desire to pass that hope on to the next generation, her children. Which made me wonder if we still do that. In addition to passing on a predisposition towards flat feet or depression, have we remembered to pass on curiosity? Are we telling the stories of hope and possibility? Do we tell them with awe and wonder in the way this witness shared these, those mysterious lights with her children? Now, those children must now be in their late 30s or early 40s. Do they remember that night? If not, I'm sure they remember the story as it has been told to them over and over again and their mother's delight in something that she could not explain. Do they tell the story of someone who encountered the mystery with awe rather than fear, joy rather than apprehension, curiosity rather than dread? So take a leap, leap with me here because I'm, I'm making the crazy connection between that witness's amazement and Mary's story. For Mary, too, had an encounter for which she was unprepared, and because she had been told the stories of God's mysteries, God's miracles, she responded with curiosity and boldness rather than fear and dread. The generational story handed down to her was one of God partnering with ordinary people and radically upending their lives for the better. She had been taught the story of Sarah, whose geriatric pregnancy was laughable. She had been told the stories of Tamar and Rahab, so she knew of faithful women who had walked in dangerous and daring places. She had been told the stories of Bathsheba and Ruth, who had weathered grief and loss and possible shame. Mary's wasn't some kind of naive belief system. It was rooted in the faith of the generations. And if those stories were not enough, she had her name, Mary, or originally Miriam, in Aramaic, Miriam. We must remember her, Moses' sister. How many times had she asked her parents to tell her the story of the brave woman with whom she shared a name? And they would tell this little Mary how a young girl helped her mother create a basket bed how she kissed her baby brother before he was tucked in and left among the reeds to be found by Pharaoh's daughter. As Miriam witnessed little Moses' rescue, an idea was born, remember? Do you need someone to be the baby's nursemaid? She asked Pharaoh's daughter. And within moments, Moses was returned for a time to his mother's arms. He would grow up to be the one God would call upon to lead the Hebrews from enslavement to freedom. And on that day, it would be Miriam who would lead the singing and the dancing on the far side of the Red Sea. Mary knew these stories to be her story too. She knew the God of Tamar and Rahab was her God, a God who answers. She knew the God of Bathsheba and Ruth was her God, a God who provides a way through suffering. She knew the God of Miriam was, a God, was her God, a God who frees the oppressed and has compassion on those in despair. To these stories, the angel Gabriel invites her to add her story. John Dominic Crossan suggests that we should think of angels as ultimate meanings radiantly personified. I love that. Ultimate meanings radiantly personified. The angel tells her of impossible things, ultimate meanings that will become possible. The angel invites her into partnership with God and the upending of the world. Could it be that the knowledge that she is not alone is what gives her the courage to say yes to Gabriel, yes to God? Did these names and the names of others Hagar, enslaved and abandoned and then heard by God. 
Esther, who stood up for the sake of her people at risk of her own life. Countless women's stories passed down to her for such a time as this. The gospel writer assures us of this truth in the way that he introduces this chapter of the story. Luke knows what Mary does not yet know, that Elizabeth and Zechariah, having lived a life of childlessness, are expecting a child. As Elizabeth's pregnancy prepares the way for Mary's, so Elizabeth's child will prepare the way for the Christ. This connection is so potent so powerful that Luke sets this story by telling time in a new way. He writes, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth. When has time ever been measured in such a way? This is the, usually it's the story of the eras of power. Who is resting on the throne? Which empire controls the land? That's how time is told. Not by the pregnancy of an elderly woman. That is alone is a clue to us that, that what comes next will change the way we will tell time. A woman, visibly pregnant, entering her last trimester, marks this moment. She is past the early dangers and not yet to the birthing risks. She is in the time of rest and growth for her baby, her son John. Gabriel extends the invitation to Mary and believing she may need more than the stories of those who have gone before, he tells her the good news of Elizabeth's baby. She will have a living companion to buoy her up when she feels overwhelmed by the questions and doubts, both within and without. With this assurance of a partner, of one who goes before to show her the way, Mary says yes, and we are blessed by that one word. When Mary asked Gabriel, how can this be? She was wanting to know, practically, how a pregnancy could be possible for her. But we can imagine the more expansive question in her heart. How can any of this be? God's realm on earth through me? How can any of this be? God's dream. God's dream of a child leading them? Nothing is impossible for God. The wolf dwelling with the lamb? Nothing is impossible for God. Cows and bears and leopards and goats all grazing peacefully because nothing is impossible for God. Mary said yes, believing that though she might not live to see the day when all those dreams would become reality, she could be a participant with God, dismantling what needs to be undone that peace and justice could flourish. Mary said yes, knowing that she was joining her story with those who had gone before, those who would go beside her. The angels urgently call to us today to continue to dismantle the systems that oppress and demean, exclude and abuse, harming the very ones Jesus came to save. So let us also boldly say yes laboring together for the birthing of God's dream. May it be so. Amen.
You are invited to stand as we respond to the word together. Our, soul mag our souls magnify the Lord, and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior, for God looks with favor upon us and sees our unrealized potential. In the tradition of Mary and all who have said yes to God, we stand here today to add our assents to theirs. Like Mary, we feel overwhelmed. We wonder if we are worthy or capable of following the calling. Like Mary, we have our questions, and we will not be afraid to ask them. Like Mary, we will hear and ponder the assurance that God will empower us. Like Mary, we will strive to say, let it be with us according to your will. To whatever God is inviting of us at this time in our lives and relying on God's grace, we say yes. Please be seated. So we come together to share our, our joys and concerns as a community. And I do have um, a very difficult prayer request to share with you today from um, Elizabeth Bennett. Elizabeth has traveled to be with her brother and his wife in Dallas um, this weekend. They were, um, his brother and her sister-in-law, were Elizabeth and Yancey were expecting their first child this week, and the child has died. And uh, they were going to deliver the baby yesterday. So little baby Blair um, did not make it into this world. And so our prayers are with Elizabeth and Yancey, and uh, with, I'm sorry, with Yancey and Maggie, Maggie the mother of the baby, and with Elizabeth for the parents of both Maggie and Yancey as they care for their children in this time of grief, and for all who grieve this passing. Let us hold them in, in, our, in our hearts uh, as they try to find a way forward in this difficult time. Our prayers are also with um, Linda's son, Elliot, who is continuing to have um, uncertainty around his condition and is back in the hospital. And so we pray for as they continue to run tests, that they can find some answers for him. And we hold you all in our prayers. Our prayers are with Marilyn Mancini and Jamie Shoemaker as they continue um, in their ongoing search for health and wholeness as they deal with cancer in their lives. What other prayer requests are on your hearts this day? April? Thank you. So Phil Grote got home from uh, rehab on Friday, and that was very good news and um, did well, and we can pray for his continued prog progress from home. Yes, Sarah Kaplan. Thank you. Prayers for the Northside community who lost one of their beloved teachers. Um, just double checking to see if there's any others that have come in. Okay. Yes, Jovi. Uh, prayer and thanksgiving to my godson Noah, who was delivered at 29 weeks. Today would have been his usual. He's now 70 pounds, 7 ounces. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. oh, wonderful. Um, Jovi shares a good news that her godson, who was premature, is doing really well, is thriving. So that is great news. Thank you for that. Leslie. Thank you. Um, Leslie gives thanks that this community has said yes to a new way of being, of serving our community through the groundbreaking that we will do today for our new food, food ministry building. And many, many thanks for all those who have made this day possible. Let us go to God in prayer. <coughs> Holy God, we take a deep breath in and know that you are here. For where two or more are gathered, you are there. You never leave our sides. 
like a protective mother hen or the sun who circles the earth, you carry us with you. So today we bow our heads with tender spirits and ask that once more you would lean in close. Hear our prayers. Buoy our hearts. Send your spirit rushing through us like a mighty wind. We fear the return of a COVID variant that could once again shut down the world. We fear the ongoing tide of violence. We fear global warming and wonder about the future for grandchildren. We look at our own lives and are afraid that we aren't making much of a difference, that we might be forgotten at the end of the day. We fear rejection, grief. We fear not being enough. Holy God, the luck of our lives is deep. At times it feels like we're swimming in it. And so we come to you today because you are a God who said, do not fear 365 every day. Inserted yourself into the corners of our lives, refusing to let us go, refusing to leave us alone. And so we rest in that. We empty our pockets of our fears and give them to you, trusting that you will hold them tenderly, just as you hold us. You whisper, be not afraid. You promise to never leave our side. You call us beloved. May that be enough for today. And now, with hope in our hearts, we pray the words that Jesus taught us to pray, using the words and language which are most comfortable for each of you. Let us pray. Our Mother and Father God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward? Let us gather our offerings to co-create the healing for which we long. For the spirit of the living God has plans for the flourishing of all beings.
please join me in prayer. Holy One, this Advent season we wait in peace and we give in peace. Oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. This is my fault. Christ, you let wisdom um, bless you. The early prophet on the bank of the river, the quiet of the garden in your silent deep. You receive the overflow of the anointing oil. You teach us to be the stones where they live, never picking up up to harm another. We dedicate our offerings to your example of wild love. Amen. Come, people of God, come to the table of hope. Our hope is in God, who made heaven and earth. Come, people of God, come to the table of peace. Christ is our peace and healing for the nations. Come, people of God, come to the table of life. The Spirit will feed us and make us new. You are our life, God, our hope from the beginning of time to the end of the age. In your presence, water springs from dry ground, grapes hang heavy on the vine, and grain abounds in valleys of peace. Your word brings joy to the desolate, and your steadfast love awakens even those who are sleeping in death. Therefore, we who cling to your promise and wait for a child to lead us, raise our hearts to you, and with everything that lives, we proclaim your endless glory as we sing. now, God, with grateful joy, we remember Jesus. We remember that he came to us humbly. He put aside the glory that was his. We remember that he announced your favor. He taught us to welcome your mercy. We remember that he resisted evil, loved well, and turned no one away. He did your will and trusted your love. And we remember that on the night before he died, he took bread, and having blessed it, he broke it. And he offered it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. And after the meal, he took a cup, and he poured it out for them, offering new words. He said, This cup is a new covenant poured out with my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, satisfy our hungry hearts. Bless this grain from the field, these grapes from the vine, gifts, gifts you have given, and work of human hands. As we share their goodness, give us love for each other and make us servants of your peace until the new age of justice comes and every creature beholds it. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Communion servers.
cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. for gladness in this bread and cup, for love that cannot die, for peace the world cannot give, for joy in the company of friends, for the splendors of creation, and for the mission of justice you have made our own. Give us the fruits of this holy communion, oneness of heart, love for neighbors, forgiveness of enemies, the will to serve you every day, and life that never ends. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Safety first. I'm blowing these out because we're leaving the building, all right? If I, except I can't reach. Um, someone tall needs to come and blow out the Advent wreath before, before we leave the room, okay? We're not burning down the church on my watch, all right? All right. Yeah, that, go for it. Awesome. Excellent. There we go. Yes, there we go. I'll feel much better now when we cross the street. Thank you, Silas. All right, you'll have a minute to go to your car and get your shovel that I hope you brought. And if you didn't, I have shovels to share. So, all right, we are going to leave the building. Go across the street very carefully. There is going to be tailgating because Sherry Kimbrough is bringing refreshments to us over there. We will have um, a brief litany and prayer, and we will... It will be on Zoom, so if you're still worshiping with us online, you can join us that way. So let us go out with joy and be led forth with peace, knowing that the mountains and the hills will break forth before us. Friends, let us go in joy to serve the Lord across the street. Here we go.